Compared to the previous limit laws we have learned, the squeeze theorem is quite specialized, but you should at least be able to recognize it when you see it used, even if you don't use it so often yourselves. So we're going to take a limit as x approaches c, and suppose we're in the following situation. Near C, we have a smaller function and a bigger function. And the limit as X approaches C of the smaller function equals the limit as X approaches C of the bigger function. Now suppose we have a medium function as it were. Between F and G, we squeeze in a third function, H. The limit as X approaches C of H of X equals this common limit. If we call this common limit k, the limit of this middle function is also k. So let's try to visualize this. Here is a C and here is K. And you have some function G. And as X approaches C, G approaches K. And you have a smaller function f. And as x approaches c, f also approaches k. And now you have this function h that's squeezed between them. It can't get above this and it can't get below that. So as X approaches C, this function also has to be approaching K. As an example, let's look at the limit as X approaches zero of one over X. Sorry, of X times the sign of one divided by X. And let me start by saying what you can't do. Your first instinct might be to say, oh, we have the limit of a product. 
let's rewrite that as the product of the limits. That doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is that this limit doesn't exist. This was one of the examples we gave when we were talking about limits not existing. So we can't do that. What we can say is that the sign is stuck between negative one and one, and therefore x times the sine of one over x is stuck between negative x and x. And as x goes to zero, negative x goes to zero. And as x goes to zero, positive x goes to zero. So as x goes to zero, this function, which is squeezed between these functions, must also go to zero. And that's a pretty prototypical example of the squeeze theorem in practice.